So let's define what we have been given in our problem and see if we have if we have everything right now it goes straight to solving. So we know the height of the water column is three meters and that's H, H sub W and three meters isn't given to us straight up but we know with the length from uh, point two upwards to that uh, zero axis. I don't have that titled any axis, but it's five meters and we know from point one down to uh, the point two axis is two meters, just subtract that and we find three meters. The height of the monometric fluid is two meters, the height of that column. And the height of the oil column is five meters. So it looks like we have all the heights defined in our formula, but we have none of the specific weights defined, at least in our particular problem statement. We are given the specific weight of water on page 103 of the NCS reference manual, which is 9,810 newtons per cubic meter. So remember that, that's a constant. The specific weight of water is 9,810 newton cubic per cubic meter. But we don't know at all the specific weights of the monometric liquid or the oil. And again, that's where our knowledge of fluid properties will come into play. So let's go ahead and revisit what we know about specific gravity. Now for that specific gravity of water constant 9810, look at the lower left corner of that left image and you'll see it posted right there. That's in your NCS reference handbook. So if you ever need it, it's on the first page of the fluid mechanics section, page 103. The specific gravity, which is denoted as SG and found on page 103, like I just mentioned, tells us how much, or more, or more, how much more or how much less dense the liquid is than water. Water has a specific gravity of one, if a liquid is more dense than water, then its specific gravity will be greater than one. If it is less dense than water, then the specific gra gravity will be less than one. To determine the specific gravity of a liquid, as you see in those relationships at the top of the right cutout, SG, we either need to know its density or its specific weight. We can either take the density of the liquid divided by the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Again, that's a constant, which is on that left, um, that left cutout as well, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Or taking the specific weight of the liquid divided by the specific weight of water. Again, it's 9810. And we will get the specific gravity of that liquid. All right, so back to our problem. Let's sketch out what data we are given in this problem statement. First, we know that we need to determine the specific weights of the fluids we are working with. We know water, but need to define what the monometric liquid and the oil specific weights are. Using this general formula and starting with oil, we can write the specific gravity and the specific weight relationship as you see right there on your screen. Rearranging this to isolate the specific weight of oil, which we are after, we get the formula as you see once again on your screen. Now we know the specific weight of water is 9810. We are also given the specific gravity of our oil of 0.88. So by plugging these known values in, we are able to accurately define the specific weight of the oil we're working with. So that's one down, there's one to go. Let's do the same for the monometric liquid. There's our specific gravity relationship. That's the general formula once again and rearranging this formula to isolate the specific weight for that liquid. Again, we know that the specific weight of water is 9810. We know that the specific gravity of this liquid is 1.25. So by plugging those values in, we're going to accurately define what the specific weight is of this liquid. All right. So revisiting our general formula, we're going to plug in all this information 
into that formula. So I'm just taking that general formula under the solution title over there on the left, pulling that over to the right, and I'm just plugging in exactly what you see um, that we've defined. So the height of the water column, the height of the monometric liquid column, height of the oil column, as well as the associated specific weights. Now we don't know P naught and we don't know P sub three, but that's okay because we're looking to determine the pressure difference between these two points, which we can do simply by pulling that P sub three over to the left side of the equation as you see now on your screen. Now simply plugging all these values into our calculator, we find that the pressure difference between the two pipes is 10,791 pascals or the pressure difference is 10.8 kilopascals. And that's it. That's all there really is to it. There's no matter, you know, what the, what the type of manometer layout you are presenting, whatever it may be, simply deploying your knowledge of the pressure height difference and the relationship will get you to the answer you're looking for.